When looking for a suitable anchorage, the easiest place to begin is a nautical chart, where you will often find that recognized anchorages are clearly marked. Cruising guides for the area that you are sailing in are also great resources, since not only do they recommend anchorages, they usually give information on the conditions in which specific anchorages offer the best protection. Few anchorages give all-round protection from waves, wind, and swell in all conditions. You want a spot that has sufficient depth for your boat at low tide, offers shelter from waves, seas, or swell, and is not a lee shore, has a bottom that will provide good holding for the anchor tackle that you carry, and offers protection from wind, in this order. Sometimes the best anchorages are not marked or mentioned in guides, but if a cove or bay meets the criteria previously mentioned and is not a restricted area, give it a try. Considering the depth and working out a scope of 5 to 1, visualize how much swinging room you will need to avoid swinging into other boats, onto shoals or shorelines, or into other obstacles such as channel markers or fishing floats. Before dropping your anchor, approach your chosen spot with the bow of your boat pointed the way you think it will point once anchored, as influenced by the current, or lacking any, the wind. Coming into a busy anchorage, I like to take a tour around first to see where our best spot might be. I visualize how the other boats are positioned and estimate where their anchors are. Assuming they have anchored properly with 5 or 6 to 1 scope, you can create a plan of the anchorage and see where you might fit in. Note catamarans moored on their bridles will swing less than keel boats, and the 90-foot super yacht will swing differently as well. We will plan our position to drop the anchor outside the radius of their swinging circles. More space is always nicer, but it's okay to have your mooring circles overlap somewhat, not by too much. Often it's easiest to anchor at the back of the group, coming up near the stern of the boat ahead before dropping your anchor. It's a good chance to say hi if your new neighbors are on board. If part of the anchorage is taken up with moorings, you must be careful. Moored boats swing in a very small radius, and you need to make sure you are far enough away if the wind switches to push you towards them. Is it dragging? No. Are we okay? I've got my foot on the chain because I can feel any vibration if the anchor's dragging, but I don't feel anything at all, and it looks like it just set in perfectly when I dropped it. So I'll get Paul to pull back on it. Okay, we're here. Thanks for watching this Distant Shores How To segment. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Are you interested in the cruising lifestyle? Are you planning to sail away on a cruising adventure? Or researching cruising areas and destinations? Distant Shores is a television series about the cruising life with lots of tips for sailors planning to sail away. This is Oswego, New York. We are entering the Erie Canal system and this will take us all the way from Lake Ontario to the Hudson River, which gets us to New York City. Plus destination information to help you make your cruising plans. Yeah, I can stand on the bottom. We've been filming distant shores for nearly 15 years and know the fun and challenges of the cruising life. We've made distant shores with you in mind. We include plenty of cruising tips in this travel series, as well as lifestyle segments and hints for sailors heading to exotic destinations. Encouragement for you and your crew to get out cruising. Destinations include the Intracoastal Waterway, the Bahamas, Caribbean, the Mediterranean, Scandinavia, Transatlantic Passage Making, the French Canals and more.